daybreak, and it looks like another busy day for Glenn Beck. His hay is ready to bring in after two days of clear weather. If the rain holds off, he can get the job done today. The whole family soon stirring. Mom is busy at the electric range frying fresh eggs and country bacon. Young Dick checks the breakfast and then goes out to start the morning's chores. Gus, the hired man, gets ready for a big day. And Hugo, the pup, sneaks in to wake up the boys, Bert and Bobby. Yes, Glenn Beck has quite a household. Just an average farm, though. About 100 acres, some poultry and pigs, and 30 head of fine dairy cattle. The morning's work starts in the barn. Glenn uses electric milkers to speed the milking. He says it gives him cleaner milk, too. And here's one customer that demands clean milk right from the calf pail. And uh-oh, uh-oh-oh-oh. Somebody's teaching Kitty bad habits. Bobby's going to teach his cat to drink like a lady. Yes, sir, a farm is a busy place in the morning. As soon as the dew was off the hay, Glenn got out the field baler and started to work. The radio said, rain tonight, so Glenn has no time to wait. Everything was going fine till about 11 o'clock. Then, suddenly... Hey, Pop, something's busted! Looks like trouble. Maybe the machine picked up a rock. Yes, sir, that's just what happened. The knotter trip snapped loose on its shaft. Glenn is really worried. He can't let his hay lay in the field another day. If he takes the baler into town to get it welded, Glenn will lose the whole day, maybe more. Looks like a lost hay crop. Then young Dick had a good idea. Jack Williams on the next farm just got a new farm welder. Maybe he could fix it. Glenn was lucky enough to get a hold of his neighbor at noontime. Williams brought his welder over to the Beck farm, and five minutes later, he was busy welding the shaft. With that new farm welder, it was no trouble at all to repair the broken part right there in the farmyard. Williams assured Glenn that this will be a permanent repair. The welded part is now just as strong as ever, if not stronger. There she is, welded on the spot. Yes, sir. Glenn Beck got his hay into the barn that day thanks to his neighbor's farm welder. Sometimes a timely weld can save an entire crop. A few weeks later, Glenn got an invitation from his neighborhood dealer to attend a welding clinic where broken equipment would be welded free of charge. Glenn couldn't go, but he sent Gus, the hired man to take down a broken shovel and get it welded. So the next day, Gus took the pieces with him to the welding clinic. The clinic was held on a nearby farm and quite a crowd was there. In one corner of the lot, a group of neighboring farmers were watching a welding demonstration. As the demonstrator fixed the visitor's equipment, you could watch him through the dark protective window of a hand shield. A little later, Gus asked the demonstrator to fix his shovel. Let's watch and see how it's done.
Now look at that. Almost as easy as gluing the pieces together. And there she is, stronger than ever. Hmm. <laughs> Gus isn't so sure. What's he gonna do? <laughs> now he's convinced. Yes, sir, a welder is a mighty handy tool. But as Gus said to the dealer later on, does it really pay to own one? Are there enough uses for it on the average farm? Well, let's look around a bit at the demonstration table. Here are some cultivator bars which have been extended by welding extra lengths of material to the bars. This gear was useless because of broken teeth. Notice how welded material can be used to build up the broken area until it matches the other teeth. These are just a few of the repair jobs that pop up regularly on the average farm. A man who owns a welder making his own repairs year in and year out will find that the welder pays for itself many times over. Its usefulness is not confined to little repairs like this, of course. As the dealer said to Gus, many farmers use a welder to change standard equipment or build things they can't buy. This sturdy steel trailer was built in a farmer's spare time using scrap steel and pipes. By utilizing scrap, farmers keep material costs to practically nothing. The frames and brackets of this big buck rake were put together with a farm welder. This elevator is just another example of how the welder helps farmers to make very valuable equipment at low cost. Here's a short chassis runabout for field work, fabricated with a welder. The same farmer made this pasture harrow out of old tire rims and chains. The chains are welded to the rims. He's also making a field wagon. Here's the welded chassis. On this mowing machine, the old iron rim was cut off, and a rubber tired rim was welded in its place. Note how the new rim was welded to the old spokes. Other examples of homemade, home welded equipment are shown in these photographs. Here's a post hole digger, a weed cutter for sugar beet cultivation, a special rig to dose worms with chemicals, a buck rake and unloader, a planter that shoots water into the furrows, another weed cutter, and an unusual machine that hooks on tree limbs and showers down a crop of nuts. The welder is handy for attaching special hooks and eyes to farm machinery, or for welding on extra braces and brackets. Busy machines, like a farm tractor, can be kept in good repair with a welder. Parts that are subject to wear, like the drawbar hole, can be built up with a hard surfacing electrode. This electrode puts a new, extra hard surface on soft metal parts, so that they'll last longer and add years of life to the whole machine. Many farmers like to make a tack weld on the belts in their farm machinery, like this plow. A light weld like this will keep the bolt from rattling loose. Here's the cylinder block of a tractor engine that had cracked. With a farm welder, this block was fixed and the tractor was back in action in no time. When the crankcase of this orchard sprayer cracked, it didn't upset the farmer's spraying schedule. A quick, easy weld put the sprayer back in operation within an hour. You'll find welded repairs in the milk house and cow barn. This feed wagon and calf pen were made from scrap metal and old bedsteads. Yes, the welder is useful on a dairy farm. And inside the house, when you turn on the faucet and there's no water, maybe a worn part of the pump is broken. The farm welder can make a quick, permanent repair, and water will be flowing again in a few moments. The welder is often used to rough cut pieces of metal. The tremendous heat of the electric arc melts the metal and slices it like a hot knife through butter. And always the welder is near at hand for quick repairs when equipment breaks down and stops the job. But let's get back to Gus and the welding clinic. 
The dealer is telling Gus that this portable welder is designed specifically for the farm. It will handle all farm welding jobs and is especially designed to operate from the average farm power line. It can be connected on any 230 volt wiring circuit that will handle a five horsepower motor or an electric range. The welder weighs only 115 pounds and conforms to the new NEMA standards for farm welders. Look for this NEMA rating and the underwriter's label. They assure you that the welder will meet your farm needs in performance and safety. Operation is simple too. Just pick the electrode for the job as suggested by your handbook of instructions. Then turn the crank till the indicator comes to your electrode size and the machine automatically gives you the right current and heat for the job. The voltage in the welder has been held low for safety and yet high enough to permit easy striking. Well, that's fine, thought Gus, but maybe I couldn't learn to weld. Well, after the outdoor demonstration, everyone went inside the barn to see a moving picture on how to weld. Let's sit in with the crowd and see this movie. inside that bright, mysterious welding arc. What must a man know to be able to weld? These are the questions asked as this useful tool of industry moves out to the farm. As farmers see the advantages of the welder for everyday repair and construction work, they also find that welding is easy to learn and easy to do. In this film, we will demonstrate some of the fundamentals of arc welding, which can be mastered by the beginner with a little practice. Once these fundamentals are understood, you'll be able to do most common repair work and metal fabrication. Welding is a process of joining metals. In arc welding, an electric arc is formed between the work and a metal electrode, which is held by the operator. To get a good weld, you should watch three things length of arc, angle of electrode, and speed of travel. When you weld, wear protective gloves and a long-sleeved shirt. Wear a face shield. Goggles are not enough. Never look at the arc without full protection for the eyes. Here is how to strike the arc and begin welding. The electrode is held near the work the safety hood is dropped, and the electrode is swung down, scratching the plate to make contact, is drawn out to about one quarter of an inch, held momentarily, and is then brought back to the correct arc length. Hmm, what's this? Joe McGee's a fraidy cat, afraid to strike an arc. Go on, strike it. It won't hurt you. Won't it? No, go ahead and weld. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, Well, now that we know how to strike the arc, let's see what happens. Let's move the camera in closer than the human eye can possibly go. When the arc is struck, it almost instantly creates a temperature of about 6,000 degrees centigrade, hotter than the heart of a blast furnace. This tremendous heat melts both the metal being welded and the electrode. The metal melts off the electrode, crosses the arc, and mixes with a molten base metal. The force of the arc causes this liquid metal to flow to the rear of the crater where it cools to form a bead. The movement of this metal toward the rear of the crater and the shape of the crater help you to judge the quality of the work. Learn to use them as your guide in welding. Another way to recognize when you're welding correctly is in the sound of the arc. A 
sharp, steady frying sound. After the bead has been run and the slag is removed, its appearance will definitely tell you whether or not the weld bead has been correctly made. If your weld is good, the ripples will be uniform and will build up a smooth bead. This cross-section cut shows that a good bead will join the plate with no overlap or undercut. It will have complete fusion and good penetration. This is good welding. Now, let's look at some of the common errors. If the arc is too long, the metal melts off the electrode in large globules. These globules drop on the work in a form of spatter instead of going into the molten pool as useful metal. A wide, spattered and irregular bead is formed. The weld metal is left on top of the plate with poor fusion between base and deposited metal. If the arc is too short, a proper molten pool will not be maintained. The arc will have a tendency to short out and the electrode will freeze to the work. The bead is uneven, with irregular ripples. It is high. There is poor fusion. Note the slag and gas pockets. In order to maintain proper arc length, you must feed the electrode into the work as fast as it melts off, tipping the electrode slightly in the direction of travel. Here, the angle is too low, which would give you a distorted bead. If the electrode is tilted too far from side to side, you will get a lopsided and crooked bead. Speed of travel is important. When the speed of travel is correct, the bead forms in an oval shape with an oval crater. The ripples are uniform. The bead will have good shape with the right fusion and penetration. If travel is too fast, the metal forms gas pockets. The ripples will be pointed and the bead very narrow. Penetration is irregular, with undercut on each side. When the electrode travels too slowly, the molten metal piles up. The bead will be high and wide with a rather straight ripple. There will be considerable overlap. Penetration is too deep. But after a bit of practice, the beginner will learn to watch the movement of the metal at the back end of the pool, and it will indicate when the length of the arc is correct, when the angle of electrode is correct, and when the speed of travel is correct. Once you've mastered these simple fundamentals, you can weld. Well now, doesn't that movie show you that welding isn't so tough? Gus here is going to try his hand at it. First, the glove. He looks mighty professional in that helmet. Well, here goes. Oops, oops. Steady now. Keep trying. Once more. Ah, uh, once more there. There, that's more like it. Welding doesn't take any special training. Just an afternoon's practice and he'll start to feel at home with it. Let's see how it looks, Gus. Not bad. Not bad for the first try. Yes, there are lots of farmers who have shied away because they do not realize how easy it is to use a welder. Next day, Gus told Glenn all about the welder. But you know how it is. Glenn wanted to think it over before he bought it. A few weeks later, Glenn was at work in his oak field. Everything was going fine. One more day with the combine would clean up the crop. Uh-oh. And then it happened. 
something snapped against a rock. Glenn noticed she wasn't cutting and stopped the machine. This time, Glenn wasn't so lucky. He couldn't borrow a welder anywhere. That night, the skies grew dark. The lightning flashed. And a hailstorm swept in from the west. Next morning, when he saw his battered crop, Glenn made up his mind to buy a welder. You just can't tell when you're going to need welding on the spot. Next week, the whole family went to the store. Mom couldn't keep away from those wonderful home appliances. New electric ranges, refrigerators, home freezers, electric coffee makers, travel irons, and an automatic dishwasher. They're all real work savers to keep Mom young and good looking. But Glenn and his boy Bert went straight to the farm welder. Glenn was pleased to see all the accessories that are included in the purchase price of the welder. All the things he'll need for welding on the farm. A helmet to protect the eyes and face. A fully insulated electrode holder and cable. Gloves. A selection of electrodes. A ground cable. A scratch brush. Slag hammer a primary cable and plug, and a wall connector. And finally, a handy instruction book that tells how to weld, which electrode to use, and many other useful facts. The dealer pointed out several important safety precautions. Never weld near inflammable materials, such as hay, gasoline, or oily rags. And make sure that there are no people or animals nearby to see the arc because the direct rays will cause eye inflammation. Never look at the arc except through a welding shield. Glenn also bought an electric carbon torch, which plugs right into the welder. The carbon torch is used for welding and brazing copper, brass, monel metal, everdoor, aluminum, and cast iron. Its flame is much hotter than the ordinary torch flame and can be used for preheating, heating, bending, and forging. It will move to the job wherever a torch is needed. <laughs> Who's this, Joe McGee? Oh, I see, a junior welder. They learn welding young these days. Glenn bought the welder. And from that day, life on the farm sure has been a lot easier. Did you ever see a doodle bug? That's what he calls this funny little bobtail crossbreed car. With his welder and other tools, Glenn was able to combine the parts of several automobiles to make a machine useful for many farm operations. Notice the hoist that is welded to the front of the doodle bug. He figures this hoist cost him only a few dollars because he got the materials at the scrapyard. He also made this manure loader out of some steel scrap with part of an old boiler as a scoop. As a matter of fact, Glenn is quite a scrap collector now because he has so many good uses for metal sheets and pipes. With old pipes like this, he has made several of these welded metal gates for himself and his neighbors. Within the next year, he made this snow plow that attaches to his tractor. He put together this strong, lightweight boat trailer for quick fishing trips. He designed this homemade wagon unloader. It empties a wagon in about five minutes and carries silage to the blower. The welder's been useful around the house, too. When the front wheel of Bobby's tricycle snapped off, a quick weld put the pieces back together again and nobody could tell the difference, least of all Bobby. bicycle built for two is proof that young Dick has learned to weld. He made it out of two bicycles. It's very popular with the young ladies of the neighborhood. Yes, the welder has been useful in many unexpected ways. In the cool autumn evenings, the whole family likes to go outdoors for picnics. So Glenn made this welded grill to cook thick, uh, tender, juicy steak. Mmm, mmm, delicious. Thank you.
when winter came and the snows descended on the field. Glenn found that he had a fascinating, money-saving hobby in welding. He not only caught up on the repairs to his farm equipment, he also did some work on the side for his neighbors and made a sled for the boy. For like many other farmers, Glenn has found that electric arc welding is no longer a specialist's tool. With today's inexpensive, easy to operate welder, the joining of metals is as simple and as useful as wood carpentry or any other common workshop activity. In spare time or in emergency, in the shop or in the field, the modern farmer finds that it pays to do his own welding on the farm.